It is a wonderful sunny morning here, and I am so excited to be here with you. Um, to be honest, I wasn't prepared for this to start. I just waved my hand and forgot the <laughs> camera. <laughs> Auto start so high. Um, I am Brianna. I am the dyer designer human behind the Little Wolf Knits and this podcast, and I am so excited for you to be here today with us for session 22. In the last week I said it was 20. It wasn't. It was actually 21 because I had missed one. So session 22 coming back at you only a week later, technically less than a week later than last week's podcast. So I think that's going to be a regular thing. And I'm very excited. Um, you can find me on Instagram at the Little Wolf Knits, on Ravelry as the Little Wolf or Brianna Lupino for my designs. And all the other stuff that I talk about or where you can find me is down below in the little description drop down box there. Hit the little arrow. Um, ba -da -ba -ba. Yeah, I'm super excited. Um, I don't know how long this will be. I was going to say it will be a nice quick one, but who knows? Because I'm chatty and the sun is out. And I lit a candle and it's so cozy and warm. Maybe I'll stay here forever. I won't. I have plans at 12. And it is 1030 on Thursday. What is the date? I don't know what it is. November 16th. Oh my gosh, November 16th. Um, Thanksgiving is next week. This is so exciting. Um, but, I'm, but anyway, okay, let's get started. What am I wearing? I feel like y'all are going to be sick of me if you watch Nitty Natty's <laughs> vlog from last week or two weeks ago, whenever it was, last week. Um, I was wearing this exact outfit because this I want this to be my new uniform. This is not a, I did not make this shirt. I am not sponsored, but I just like, I don't know. I really love it. I think it's from American Eagle and I think the shawl matches with it so, so well that I want to wear this every day. This is my, I'll take it off, Barrier Reef Shawl. Um, I don't even remember the designer from being honest. I want to say maybe Nicole. Um, but she is a small designer. I think she has like maybe two designs, um, but she's from New Jersey and I had found her through, I don't know. I did my nails this morning and I really hope they're dry enough and I don't mess them up. Um, but I found her, I think I was at New Jersey Wool Walk or in maybe my LYS in Teaneck that has since closed and I was talking about New Jersey designers and I found her and I saw the shawl and I was like, this is beautiful. I want to make it. And whenever I wear it, I get so many questions about it. People are like, is that Andrew Mowry? Is that Stephen West? Look at it. It is beautiful. You can't even see all of it, but... There's brioche, there's garter, brioche, garter, brioche. Um, a lot of people ask if it's the brioche-alicious, I think, maybe. Um, but this is a really special shawl for me. I think it's my first shawl I ever made. That might be a lie. It's definitely, I don't know what I made before this. It is definitely the first shawl I ever made with my yarn. And it was also the first one, two, three, four colorways I dyed for the shop, like that became regulars in the shop and I still sell them. It, they actually started selling a lot this week and I know Natalie was wearing this at Rhinebeck, so I don't know if that's why or what happened there, but they're beautiful colorways. So this blue is high tide. This variegated, it's natural with teals and then barely there orange speckles is white caps this beautiful variegated with browns and pans and teal is down the shore and then the main color the, the tonal that I held with it all is driftwood and it's like this beautiful neutral it's a warm neutral and it's not super yellow so I have a few <laughs> I feel like I have more neutrals maybe than other dyers do. Maybe I'm wrong. Um, so like Sandy Cheeks is a very barely there neutral and it leans cool, like a little bit more grayish cool. Um, I have Custard, which leans yellow. I have Glazed, which actually is cool but leans almost a little green. So it's like a little funky and I really like it. 
This is a warm, which I don't have that many of beside custard, but it has like almost beigey tan undertone. So it's not pink by any means, but it leans like it could be. Yeah. Oh, so I told you I did my nails, so I'll show you. Don't look at that one. Um, but this is OPI, Berlin there, done that. Um, but yeah, I love the shawl so, so much. It's so cozy. It is years old and I constantly wear it and constantly get asked about it. Um, this and my solstice in green are most certainly my most worn shawls. I love them. So go check it out. You could be my twin and get these yarns. I actually think some of them are available as ready to ship yarn which means you could get it for 20% off using the code wintering. I think by the time this comes out, if the sale runs out, I'm going to extend it until Monday. Cause that's when I'm going to drop this video. So I'll extend the 20% off sale so you can be my twin. I don't know if they're all in stock, if I'm being honest, but you get some money off. So that's cool. So that's what I'm wearing. I guess I'm kind of bringing us into admin things. I'll do them at the front end this time. Um, since I waited till the back end last time. So there's a sale in my shop, 20% off all ready to ship or in stock yarns. I did some website updates. I know last week I said I was hoping to do it and I think I figured it out. I did, I changed my theme, I changed my whole platform, I moved everything over and you can now filter by yarn base. So you can go to ready to ship and then there's filters and you can choose yarn base and say, I want to find something that's available in Bowie because I'm obsessed with Surrey right now. There are so much Surrey and so much mohair that's ready to ship. I feel like I could just have a fuzzy sale. Maybe I need to design a pattern that uses Surrey. I do. But grab some yarn, make a vampire sweater, make something. Um, but you can then filter by base and then see which colorways are available in that base and which are sold out so you don't have to go into every individual one and i'm so so happy and excited that i did this i also um have added a little like note box at checkout so y'all can leave me notes especially if you're buying something like a mystery sock blank or a mystery mini skein set or a mystery skein because those are all discounted um beside my sock blanks because those are one of a kind they're really special but you can say no greens, please, or I really love something moody or autumnal or I love bright pops and I can then pick something out that you're going to love. So I'm really excited about those changes. I'm so curious to hear what you think. So if you go over and check out my website, leave a comment below and let me know um, something you're enjoying or something that you really like about my website. Maybe something you wish was there and we'll see if we can make it happen. I don't know if you can hear this. So I, I lit a magnolia candle. It's the fall scent right before we started. It has one of those wooden wicks, so it's like flickering. I don't know if you can hear it. I almost hope you can because it sounds so cozy, but you probably can't because my neighbor is mowing their lawn and I'm sure that is all that you can hear because it's very loud, but the sun is out and I'm not going to wait to do this podcast. So sorry. Um, okay, I think... Oh, one more admin thing. I might have talked about this last week. I don't remember. We are running a Mal right now through the end of the year. I think I talked about this. Um, it's called the Wrap It Up Mal. You do not need to have FOs to enter, but the goal, the premise behind the Mal is working toward finishing stuff. So clearing your needles, um, getting ready for Advent or the new year, getting stuff off your needles, wrapping up those whips that have been lingering for too long, wrapping up gifts. A lot of gift knitting is happening right now. Or honestly, just like starting and wrapping up things that you've wanted to make for a really long time. Maybe you bought the yarn or it's been in your Ravelry queue or you've been dying to make this pattern that you saved on Instagram two years ago and you never got around to it. This is the mouth for you. Knitting, crochet, spinning, weaving, whatever craft you do sewing yeah sure that's fine um just drop it in use the hashtag wrap it up 
mal 2023 i think is the hashtag on instagram check i have my post pinned on instagram so check it out to make sure that hashtag is right and then if you actually finish anything that is one of my projects or using one of my yarns throughout this mal i'm going to have a google form it's not up yet maybe i'll put it up by the time this comes out um that you can submit and enter a finished Little Wolf Knits project, and it doesn't have to be both, like it can be someone else's pattern using my yarn, or it can be my pattern using someone else's yarn, but if you finish a project, um, you don't need to start it during this mail, you can just finish it. You can submit a Google form, and then I'm gonna choose a special prize from there, I'm gonna choose a prize from Instagram, and then I will be choosing prizes that are exclusive to my Wolf Pack membership, because I always get exclusive prizes and fun things when we do mouths they helped decide on what this mouth was going to be so yeah i'm super excited uh mal sale i think those are all the things it's been 10 minutes i barely talked about any yarn except what i'm wearing so let's jump into projects first off we have finished objects i could sit here and lie to you but i'm not gonna sit here and lie to you these objects have not been finished in the last week Okay, cat's out of the bag. But I didn't want to show them all last week because it was a really long podcast. So I'm assuming this is going to be just as long. But I decided to spread it out. So I have two FOs that I'm going to show. I honestly have maybe two or three more FOs that I could show on here. I'm not going to today. I'm looking at something on that couch. That's kind of a special admin thing. I'm going to wait till the end. And I'm going to have a yarn segment. Yarn segment. Um, but I'll bring those FOs another time. For now, I figured I would start with two, and that would be a good place to go. The first FO is a design of mine. <gasps> oh, look at the yarn. I love it so much. This is my olive juice colorway. We have a few skeins of this ready to ship. I know someone just purchased this at least one skein today so we might only have two or three left but it's so cool it's like i guess it's variegated but it's layers of purples and olivey greens and it just reminds me of like a jar of olives and i love it so much it's on my sunfish base here and i think that is what is ready to ship but this pattern is even more special. So these are my Janie joggers and they're not out yet. They're in testing. They actually just started testing last week or maybe the week before, but they're a collaboration with Courtney of I Love Tinderbox, um, who is a crochet designer. So I knit this pair and then I dyed her yarn. That's like a sister color. It's called Tapenade. It's just like a deep olive green color that I love. Um, and she made a crochet version to match and they will come out, I think January 19th, maybe sometime in January. Sorry, I have like hair on my face and it's really bothering me. Um, but the patterns will come out in January and hopefully we could all cast on or do a mal or do something really fun because these are amazing. Um, so I'll show you a little bit of the detail because I'm very impressed with this pair. Um, so ribbed drawstring waistband, which I love and is so good for fit, especially if you haven't done pants before, maybe you're nervous about negative ease, drawstring will be your best friend. There were top down in the round, and then they have these really cool pockets that get picked up, worked down, and then the sides are seamed, and they're, I don't know, they're adorable, but also functional and usable. So that's really cool. And then there are also options for these side patch pockets. I have to show you this way. Um, mm -mm -mm. Oh, oh, okay, this is hard to show when it's not on a body. So these really cool patch pockets that are reverse stockinette. And then I haven't blocked these once I sewed these on. You might be able to tell. Um, and then a stockinette panel up the middle so it, you know, um, replicates that like cargo box pleat look, some ribbing at the top, and then a little flap to go over the cargo pocket on the side. I put one 
on each side of my pants and I love that look but I also think it'd be really cute just to do one side or even to do um I've seen pants in stores that are like a high pocket and then two low pockets or one on each side or something like that and I think we're like uneven so I think that would be really fun um those are added after so they're all optional and then you work down to the ribbing at the bottom and yeah I'm obsessed with these I wore these at Rhinebeck without these bottom pockets and everyone was asking about them they were like oh my gosh what is that they were actually a little distracted by my second half sweatshirt that I was wearing but once they realized the pants they were like I almost didn't even see the pants and they're so amazing um people were really excited about this pocket as am I because I think it's so good um yeah and they're definitely going to be kits in my shop probably in December and then maybe I'll start dying the beginning of January and ship them out so that they can arrive in time for cast on when the pattern comes out Super excited about that one. One FO, done. And you may notice something else here that's not a knit FO, which like, who am I? I'm crocheting. Um, we're doing all the crafts here. I have some knitting, some crochet, some spinning. So, so exciting. This is a very long whip. It's actually not as long as it could have been. So this is a scrappy, um, granny stripe blanket, but there are a few things about it. Oh no, my nail polish. There are a few things. <sighs> Sorry, I have like, you know when it gets on your skin and then it sticks up and it's getting caught on things? Um, ah, granny stripe crochet blanket. I don't know how to crochet. Every time I crochet something, I have to look up which is double crochet and which is single. Also because I get confused with like English and British stuff. So this is technically a granny stripe, but I only had, a, I used a really special hook from um, Knit Brooks, who's Kelly, my friend Kelly, um, who makes these gorgeous, gorgeous wooden crochet hooks. And the smallest they go down to is a 4.0. So that's what I use, it's fingering weight, it's a little bit too big of a hook for me, so I knew it was going to be like a looser, drapier, holier fabric, but it's okay. I really love it. I did end up doing triple crochets, which also made it holier and more open. I should have thought about that. And I chained one between each like granny cluster, which again made it more open. So I could have made this more closed in hindsight thinking about it, but I used three years worth of December countdowns um, from my shop that were left over. And I think it's actually two and a half because I think it's two 31 days and one 16 day tonal. You could see the beginning was just tonal and then the rest of them were speckled or variegated and tonal every other row. I'm not gonna take the whole thing out. It was rolled really nice, but then Kent came and messed it up. Looking at you, Kent, get in the comments. Um, so it's just here right now and I love it. It's so beautiful. Now that that is done, I need another scrappy blanket project. I needed another scrappy blanket project. I no longer have that issue, um, which you'll see in a minute, but soon enough, I will need another one. And I love always having scrappy blankets on the needles. I don't know if I can handle like having multiple on at a time, um, but I really like having one. I like having one be crochet. I don't know, something about I don't crochet often and so having something crochet that I could turn to is really cool. But I have a lot of advents and countdowns that I haven't used and I have plans for them. I'm figuring out plans for all of them, what they're all gonna become, but I'm not gonna talk about that here because I am going to make a like advent prep. Last year I did an advent day zero um, video and everyone I seemed to love it where I talked about my plans, prepped all my yarn. So I'm gonna do that this year again and then I think in there I'll potentially talk about 
what I'm planning to do during Advent season, during Vlogmas, I keep saying Advent, during Vlogmas, and then after Vlogmas, other Advent scrappy projects that I want to work on. So keep an eye out for that. Looks like my phone is dying, but it's plugged in. So I'm going to pause this, check that out, take a sip of my tea, and then we will get on to works in progress. Okay. It was plugged in. It just needed to be reconnected. Now I feel like I messed up. This isn't the same anymore. This is the new setup. Whatever. It's fine. Let's talk about our whips. Speaking of scrappy projects, I do have one whip that has made quite a lot of progress. I've made a lot of progress. It has not made progress on itself. I have been so productive on this knit because I can't stop working on it. And my plan is to have it done very soon. Anyway, what am I talking about, Brianna? I'm talking about my whip that you saw last week that's in my songbird handmade quilted bag. And it is my Quadrophenia blanket. Let's start and see with what I finished so far. So first, we have quadrant one. You saw this one last week. Very exciting. Just throw that over there. Then, we have quadrant two. You saw this one last week and I put a charm right there. My little turkey. That's where it was when I showed this last week. So I finished that colorway and then did three more colorways last week for quadrant two. And I finished that one. And yesterday, I was weaving in ends. I was like, this is going to be so good. And we have quadrant three. <laughs> and all of the ends are woven in on all three of these. Um, I was like, this doesn't look like it's big enough. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, it is. So you haven't seen these colors, but look how beautiful they are. Uh, so I did basically two colors a day. I did on, I filmed it last podcast last Friday. So sat, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I did two colors a day. Monday, I did one. Tuesday. I think I did one in the movies. Yesterday, I did one. But I've been very busy. And today and tomorrow, I have a little bit more downtime. Not as much as I thought I was going to, actually. And then Saturday, I have a friend coming to visit. And we're just probably going to, like, hang and chill and veg out. So I'm hoping to continue with two-ish colors a day. And I would love to finish this by the weekend. If I could finish this Saturday or Sunday and get it seamed. That would be amazing. I'm going to, now that I showed these three, I was waiting to do this um, until I showed them on the podcast, but I'm going to block these so that once I'm done, snip the ends and then I could just seam. And I started my fourth quadrant and it has my little door frame from friends on it. I'm only about a quarter of the way through this quadrant, but I would love to finish this today. I'm going to get lunch with a friend, so I'm going to bring this to work on it. And then this afternoon, I'll be dyeing yarn, hanging out. I have to do a consultation thing with a friend, so hopefully this will get lots of love and I could get two colors done. That would be amazing. And this is my next color, because I already have it wound up. I'll show you. This is the most green color in this advent for sure at least by far i think for sure i don't love green but it's cute this is i think it's called christmas eve which feels like christmas eve so that will be next and i'm very excited to see all the progress that is being made on this blanket and then very excited for my next plans with my next advent and you'll hear about it soon enough so excited, so excited. Okay, that's the only knitting whip that I've worked on. I sell my muscle bra. I haven't worked on it at all. So I'm not even gonna show it. See it last week, deep fried turkey, muscle bra hat for Michael. 
It'll get done eventually, but right now this is my portable project and it is taking up all of my portable knitting energy. And that's okay. I do have two more whips and they're in the spinning category, which is very exciting. I feel like podcasting like makes you get more done. It's like knowing you have show and tell, you wanna like make sure you really get your things done, you know? Um, and you saw this last week. This won't look too different to you, but this is my Bosworth drop spindle, and this is my Arolag from Kira Wiggins. And this looks so big. Like, Brianna, you were just working on this Arolag, and I didn't get anything done. That's because I finished the other run. I had to have three quarters of that Arolag left last week, and I worked all of it, and I just attached this one. And... Um, yeah, I'm loving this. I'm really excited. I would love to finish this Rolag by next week, but I'm not, again, I'm not rushing or stressed about this. I don't know what this project is going to become. Um, yeah, I don't know what this is going to become, so there's no rush. I will take this home with me probably for Thanksgiving. I'm sure I will get a lot done, and I'm very, very excited. Once this is done, I will put it on a bobbin. And then I'll let it rest. Maybe I'll let it rest. Then I'll put it on the bottom and then I'll let it rest. I don't know how you let things rest. If you know things about spinning, please let me know. Um, and then I will apply it on my electric heel wheel nano too. Just going back in the plastic bag. I have put this in a fabric bag and it started to get a little like felty. I was like, I'm going to put it back in plastic. So I think if I have Rolex or fiber, I'm going to keep them in plastic. I can put them in another bag, but I'm going to keep them in the plastic that they come in before I felt fiber. So that is my first spinning whip. My second spinning whip is my wheel whip. And you would have seen this last week. Um, this is my Nest Clementine on Falkland. The bag looks a lot more empty than it did last week, right? Well, that's because my bobbins are a lot more full. So this was my first one you saw last week and it was barely packed and now it is packed to the brim. Which is my little end, I don't wanna lose it. And yeah, really cool, loving that. Could have done better at packing, but that's okay. And then the second bobbin is super packed. There's like at least three ounces of fiber on this. Um, there is three ounces of, no, no, that's not right. Is that right? I don't know how, I, I thought this was four ounces, but I don't actually know that. I'm making that up. Which would mean half of it, two ounces on these. Am I just really bad at packing bobbins? Cause this is squishy. So maybe... It's that, but I don't know how to do it. So there's my second bobbin. I worked through half of the braid. So after talking through and then rewatching this, um, actually before I even rewatch this to edit it, once I talked it through, I was like, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do them separate and then I'm gonna use them together as contrasting colors in a brioche project or some sort of project, but I don't want to apply them together. So I decided I was going to do a fractal spin um, and, oh, look, so this, this braid is mirrored. So it goes green, orange, pink, orange, green, orange, pink. Um, which is cool. That just means it'll, um, like fade a little differently. And when I fractal spin it, it'll do something a little different than if it were in order, like if it was always green, orange, pink, green, orange, pink, green, orange, pink. But I really like this. So I worked, took the full braid, I separated it in half lengthwise, and then I worked those two bobbins from end to end. I didn't do anything with it. Now I took the other half of the braid and I separated it in half again. So now it's two. Um, and I'm going to work this in order from end to end. 
So the same order that I did that braid. Because I just want to see what that does, especially for a mirrored. A mirrored. Braid, because if I switched it, then it would just, I'd have to switch both of them. I'm going to do them in order. And then we're going to see what that does, because this is all experimentation. I'm super excited, and maybe I'll get to spinning this this weekend. We'll see. Um, there is something I got, which is cool, because this will kind of lead us into acquisitions. Um, but it's not exactly fiber or yarn, but it is a fun tool for me to use. So I was watching, I was on Instagram and something, I think my friend Carrie, who's the wandering yarny, told someone about this and they posted and then she reposted it and I was like, oh, duh. So I got a battery pack for my Nano. It's a talent cell. It's the one that was recommended on the Dreaming Robots website. Um, I haven't used it yet, but I'm super excited, honestly, because I just, then I don't need to be attached to a wall and I don't need to worry about like my wheel being attached to a wall. So I'm going to give this a go. I haven't given it a go yet, but I'm going to give it a go. Um, and it's really lightweight. It's um, oops, probably about weighs as much as my Nano does. Um, but I'm going to give that a go and I'm excited to see what it does for me. There we go. So that's one acquisition that I got. I'm going to pause this, grab my big bag of acquisitions because there is a lot to talk about here. A lot. So this will be a good opportunity, like a little intermission for you to take a break. And I'm basically going to show you all of the fiber, all of the fiber that I have ordered. It's a lot. So hang tight. Okay. So I grabbed <laughs> my basket, um, which is an African market basket. Super cool. Um, I sell them in my shop, actually. They're fair trade baskets. Um, that help villages in Ghana and I have a bunch of sizes this is like a giant market tote maybe it's called I have a giant um, like round jumbo basket I have like smaller ones that are perfect for like sweaters shawls or scrappy and then like tiny ones that are good for socks and I really like this shape and there's a smaller one of this shape and I use it all the time for everything this one I sold for myself was in my, uh, was housing my crochet scrappy blanket. But now that it's done, I was like, I might as well use this for fiber because I need somewhere to put it all. And I want to put it down so I can see it. I want to look at it. So I'm not going to show you everything. I showed you the other thing of my nest fiber the other day. But I will show you a bunch of stuff that I ordered from. Um, Hikari Handmade. I found them through, and I'm only sharing this because my friend MC was like, how do you find spinners and fiber dyers? And what I've been doing is following people who spin and then looking at the fiber they're spinning. And if I love it, then I go to the dyer and I follow them. And so it's sort of like branching out in that way. So I think I found Hikari Handmade from... Jess, maybe Shop Le Mercier, Le Mercerie, Le Mercerie, Shop Le Mercerie. Um, and Hikari Handmade does Rolex, and I got so many. <laughs> I was actually messaging MC about it. I was like, okay, I'm definitely gonna get one or two, and I ended up getting three 100 gram sets and two 50 gram sets. So I got 400 grams of fiber. And then she sent me this little gift, which is so cute. Oh, it's so pretty. Um, so I'll use this for something fun. Who knows for what? So that's probably 20 grams of fiber. I'm assuming all of these Rolags are 10 grams. But that was a gift. I'll start with 
All right, this is also a gift. Oh my gosh, I have so much. What am I doing? This is really cool. Um, this actually reminds me, Andrea Mowry is using Hikari Handmade Rolex um, on her supported spindle. And I don't, I'm totally making this up. I don't know if this is the colorway that she's using, but it reminds me of that. So those are really fun. I guess another 20 grams. I'm not sure. Maybe 10. They're kind of short, so maybe 10. But I'll use these maybe to practice fun stuff, like chain plying or something like that. Okay, so now the ones that I bought. This one is called Calm. And I think they're all merino. I don't remember off the top of my head, but look at this beauty. It's like browns and teals and soft peachy. And it reminds me of the beach and it reminds me of all things calm. And I love it. So this is 50 grams. Oh, but this is six Rolex and these Rolex are big. So I don't think those are 20 grams. Maybe they're 10 grams. Who knows? But, oh, oh gosh, wrapping this up. What did I do? I'm trying to keep these wrapped and together. Okay. And so I can know what it is. So this one was calm, beautiful, obsessed. Love it. I love them all. This one is Autumn is Calling. <laughs> I definitely have a vibe. And this is a little different than my normal, like, rusty like earth tones so but I really like these because I could use these all together for a project so this almost looks like Calm's older sister that's just a little darker has like darker browns and darker orangey pinks and and teal still um this is actually almost black maybe but look at that I'm pretty obsessed with this one and these are so soft and like, these are very airy. Um, I don't know if my other Rolag that I was using was not so airy because I had like smushed it in a bag and not treated it so well. Um, wow, but like this is dense, this is airy. I'm very excited to use these and I'm enjoying the Rolag journey. Um, so that one I got was also 50 grams but I figured it would actually look really pretty with that, either spun together, maybe, like a combo spin, is that what that's called? Or faded or plied together. Oh, plied together would be really cool because it'd be like a light dark thing, so maybe that's the way I'll go. We'll see. Um, my first of 100 grams, so this is Pebble Beach. I love them all so much. <laughs> Uh, so this is also like a big sister to Calm. It's a little bit more yellow and a little bit less peach. So it has like these deep teals, two, like a lighter brown, like this fawny color, and then a deep dark brown, and then this like peachy, it's a little less peach and more yellow, like sand. But that's what I see when I look at this. It's called Pebble Beach, but I see ocean, sand, rocks. <gasps> Oops, I kind of pulled that one apart. And look how beautiful. I'm so freaking excited to use these. I have 100 grams of that. How beautiful would all of these be together in a shawl like this, actually? Or a sweater. Imagine like a brioche sweater. Or a faded sweater, because 400 grams is a little too much for me for a sweater. That's about how much this is. Hmm. Interesting, Brianna. This one is called Modadino? Modadrino? I don't know. Oh, Mochaccino. I think it's Mochaccino. That sounds right. <gasps> This is like a very neutral, a dream. It looks like a mochaccino. It has like tans and foggy grays and greens and then just like the softest little blips of browns. And it looks like a mochaccino in my glass. 
I love this. Again, I got 100 grams of that one. these up as well as they were wrapped and then last but not least oh dusk I know this one is going to be beautiful I've seen these all by the way I just this is how I feel about them so I can definitely fade these this is like a deep navy so less teal and goes navy but then we have this orange and some burnt like dark orange and gray and this is the dusk of my dreams. Can you see it? Can you see how beautiful it is? And I also have 100 grams of that. There you go, there's my neighbor again. So I'm definitely going to use this for something. It'd be really cool, like the one side, the main color, maybe I could use, cause I think I used two skeins of that. I could use, um, I don't know. I was going to say mochaccino and one of the colors. And then the three that are really similar, I could fade them. That could be fun. So maybe dusk will be with mochaccino on the one side. I don't know. I'll have to see. But I'm now planning that project with certainty, which means I need to die. I mean, spin all of this fiber. Okay, that's gonna be my fiber haul for now. I do have one yarny thing that I picked up, which I'm very excited about. Just move that over there. Um, I actually didn't pick up, I ordered it a long time ago, but it arrived. And this is my Stripey Advent Socks. So this is from uh, the Cozy Knitter. It's their 24 day stripey socks. I don't get the sock set because I just use my one of my colorways for the heels, usually a bear or like sandy cheeks or oyster or something super neutral. Um, and you cast on December 1st and it's 250 grams. So they're perfectly matched. If you haven't seen these, you cast on December 1st and then you knit one stripe a day every day through December 24th. I've done it at least the last two years. I think no, I think I've done the last two. I was going to say last three. I think this is my third. And this is a new. You can even see, look at the packaging. You could see the color inspiration is quite different than the past ones have been like very traditional, fun greens and pinks and blues and reds and Christmas colors. This one, the inspiration was different. I feel like she said rainbow, like muted rainbow. I don't remember, but I hope, I hope this tells us something because this looks different than years past. I actually really want to open it now and I'm not a person who likes to open or spoil gifts, but I'm having this intense urge to be like, what if I just looked at it? I'm not going to, but wow. So that is here, super excited. What I like to do, um, so I work these toe up because I then make sure my foot is as long as it needs to be and then I just work my leg until I've worked all 24 stripes, do the cuff, bind off. I actually find that I'm working most of my socks toe up these days for yarn management. But I do that so then I know I have another repeat because there's two repeats of the 24 stripes in the in each of these 50 grams. So I could use a 50 gram and get through one sock. Um, I do separate heels, toes, and cuff. But still. And then I usually take this and make... Um, a second pair of socks for Sophia, for her to match me. I don't, I'm saying usually, but I think I did it one year. But then it was fun because we had matching socks, so we'll see. So if, if you watch this, maybe I'll give you socks. If you don't, you'll never get socks. But those are the acquisitions I will show for today. I only have a little bit more that came in, but I'll save that for next time because this is just too much. Um. Okay, last little segment here. Oh, my stomach's growling. Do you hear that? Um, it's 11.15, so I'm gonna finish. I'm gonna go meet my friend soon, which is exciting. Last thing I'm gonna talk about is a, a yarn segment. Like, what's in the shop? Exciting, fun things. 
I have sold out of all of my Schitt's Creek December boxes. Sorry, there were two left. I actually gave one to Natalie and I stole one, so they're gone. You never know when that's gonna happen, so if you want something, grab it while you can. Um, the other two things that are still available, I have two other 30-day countdowns. They're inspired by Edward Scissorhands, which is really fun because they were available for Halloween. I didn't spoil any of it because it also feels like one of those, like Nightmare Before Christmas. Is it Halloween? Is it Christmas? It's both movies because the snow and the Christmas tree and all of that. So I have two of those boxes on my Sunfish base and they're 30 day countdowns and you can add a full skein if you want. I think maybe just send me an email and let me know. I don't know if that listing is still open, but those are available and they're gonna go quick. And if they don't go quick, I'm gonna grab one. So if you want one, grab it. Um, we also have our November clubs in the shop, which I'm really excited about. So the first one is our Gilmore Girls inspired and it's a snowman contest, which feels a little early. I know it's not snowing yet. I know it's Thanksgiving. I'm not jumping ahead, but by the time you get this yarn, it will be beginning of December, which is then perfect to cast on a snowman sock, sock, set. Like, come on, or a sweater or a scarf, whatever you wanna make. It's really like cool wintery colors. You could look at the inspiration. Um, the color palette is in the inspiration photo on my website, and you could get it with or without a charm. That's the first monthly club. The second monthly club is my From the Open Road Club, which is a club that follows me along my travels. Um, Starting in 2017, I went on a road trip. I did another road trip in 2018. Um, and then we have some more travels when I moved back from Texas. I guess maybe when I moved to Texas, then back from Texas. Um, yeah, so that's where we're at. We're in 2018. We just went through Austin. We did Graffiti Park. We went down to San Antonio for the Riverwalk. And now we bumped across Texas eight and a half hours to El Paso where I lived for a year. It's a really special place for me. So I'm really, really excited for this colorway. And the next one is White Sands. And I think they're gonna go well together. And it feels like perfect timing for like December and New Year's. So I'm just gonna say that there. Really, really excited for that one. And then we have one more exciting thing in the shop that I'm going to share. And I'm looking over there because it's right over there. So I'm gonna have to grab it. Um, but if you haven't seen yet, Nitty Natty posted a vlog this past Tuesday. So last week on Tuesday when you're seeing this and they came out and stayed with us for a weekend. It was a really, not a weekend. It was like four or five, four days, a Sunday to Thursday. Um, and it was really fun. And while they were here and we're all working one day, we decided to dye some yarn. Kent really wanted to dye a colorway. His team, the Texas Rangers, had just won the World Championship, the World Series. So they're now world champs, which are not really world champs. Kent, again, if you're seeing this, fight me, but you can't call yourself world champs if you haven't gone against everyone in the world. I feel that way about the Super Bowl too. Sorry, not sorry. Um, but we decided to dye a colorway that he was super excited about. He really wanted a Texas Ranger colorway. Um, so we did a lot of like thinking and planning and inspiration. And then I just helped him figure out how to make his vision come to life. I helped him with some speckling, but he also did some speckling, which is super cool. And we decided to put the colorway up for a pre-order. So it's gonna be available as a pre-order through the end of November. And then I'm gonna start um, dyeing it and shipping it out in the beginning of December. And it's really cute. I didn't know if anyone would like it, but a lot of people have ordered it. Um, so I don't know if all of y'all are Texas Rangers fans or if you're just like patriotic or you just want to be a part of the fun and have this memory of like Brent, Brent, oh, we can call ourselves Brent. Brie and Kent dyed the special colorway together. Um, and I just want to have it and be a part of it. I think Kent, I don't know what project Kent is going to get from it, but I'm going to make Michael something to match, so maybe I'll make him a hat, or maybe if Kent tries socks, I'll make Michael socks, and then they'll have a matching project, which is really cute. So if you wanna match them or be a part of that, uh, let me grab the yarn and show you, but it is available now for pre-order.
Okay. Man, did I hit this again? Um, this is it. It's called World Champs. It has this like royal kind of blue and red speckles, a lot of natural space because their jersey is a lot of white. And then some like goldish yellow speckles because they're world champs now. And <laughs> when you're a world champ, you get to wear a jersey that has gold around the letters for one game. We almost named this colorway that for one game. Seriously, instead, I thought it was the whole season. But this is the colorway. It's I think it's really cute. It's not like my palette or like earthy or neutral at all, but I really like it. I think it's a special memory. Um, and I know a lot of people like blues. I think this is a great colorway that, I don't know, people tell me my color sense is a little more masculine. But then I look at this and I'm like, not my, not for me. Like, this isn't my palette. People are like, I love that. I'll make that for my dad or my brother, or like um, any masculine folks in my life. And I'm like, okay. I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me. It's not adding. The math ain't adding. But that's in the shop. Super excited about that. Um, other yarn things. Tailgate collection is still available. It's getting dyed and shipped out on a rolling basis through... Super Bowl basically. So like think end of January, beginning of February. Um, and I think those are the big things. That's all that I'll share. The shop sale is still going on the shop. Um, I mentioned that earlier. So I think those all are all the yarny things. So we did FOs, we did whips, we did acquisitions, we did yarny things in the shop. We did admin at the beginning. I think we're done life stuff. I'll just chat for a few minutes about life stuff. Cause I don't <laughs> know if there's that much. So I talked to y'all on Friday afternoon, which is why I'm trying to think. So Saturday, Michael actually had work planned. So I drove um, down the shore and we had a little like mock girls weekend. So it was me my mom, my grandma, nanny, and um, Mickey, and we hung out for a little bit. Mickey left early, and then me, my mom, and nanny stayed through Monday, which was really cool because I realized I don't need to rush home Sunday night. I can do my work from home stuff here. Um, it was a lot of computer work, setting up my website, so I did that. My mom and I went for a really nice walk on the boardwalk and we saw the beach and the ocean and that was lovely. I have very old sneakers there and I hurt my foot, but <laughs> we're fine. Um, and I came home on Monday and Michael and I started the Midnight Club, which I'm really liking so far. We watched um, Hill House, Bly Manor. We just recently finished Midnight Mass, which was okay. I don't love monster scary movies. Um, I don't think I'm giving anything away by saying that. It's also been out for a very long time. But if you watch the trailer, um, it's not my favorite genre or subgenre of horror movie, it, but it was fine. It was good enough. It was well done for what it was. This Midnight Club, I'm liking a lot more. Um, it's way in my genre, more like spooky, ghost, what's going on, mystery, um, cult the sort of situation and I love it and I we're almost maybe halfway through we watched like two episodes last night and one maybe we're three or four episodes in but I'm really liking it and then Tuesday I had a work day and we went to the movies we resumed our Tuesday date night which feels like it's been way too long um but we resumed Tuesday date night we did our half price burgers at Bar Louie. They're no longer half price. They're now $8, which is annoying because some of them were like $7.50, whatever. Um, we resumed our half price, our date night. We went half price burgers and then we went to the movies and we saw Priscilla and it was so good. I love biopics. Um, like that's a genre I really enjoy or like I don't know if it, like historical biopics like we watched dumb money last week and again it's not about someone's life but it's about an experience at this certain point in time um 
And that one was really cool because we lived through it and I like remember it and had friends who were investing. So it was really a cool thing to see. But we saw Priscilla. I really liked it. Um, again, it's her side of the story. I, I know I think Lisa Marie has shared to her feelings about some dishonesty or what was not true in the movie. But I also know last year or two years ago when we watched Elvis, I was like, wow, it feels like there were a lot of things that were left out. Like, they barely touched on his substance abuse or, like, pill addiction until, like, the end end of the movie. And I was like, that's, I don't think that's how that went. Um, so, again, there were both each side of the story, but I feel like seeing them together, you get, like, a better picture of the truth or the truth is somewhere in there. I thought it was really enjoyable. I liked it. I still can't believe that she was 14 and he like groomed her. Yeah, it was wild. I don't know. If you don't know their story, it was pretty wild to see. And Michael and I had to do a lot of checking of like, whoa, there's so much misogyny and there's so much that I don't agree with in this movie and recognizing it was a really different time and trying to have some grace and understanding, but boy, it was interesting. Um, so we did that on Tuesday. Yesterday was Wednesday. It worked all day. We watched more Midnight Club. That's pretty much all we've done, which is lovely. I'm going to lunch today with my friend, and then we have fun plans this weekend with friends coming in. So I'm sure I will have more to talk about next week with you all. But that's it for now. I'm going to sign off. I'm going to go get pick up my friend and get lunch. I'm super excited. And I will chat with you all next week. Have a good one. Take care of each other.